Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm taking advantage of the good weather as I explore sundials. Let's check it out. For thousands of years, humans were able to tell what time of day it was based on the sun's position in the sky. This then led to humans developing sundials before mechanical and digital watches and clocks were developed. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a simple sundial. For this activity, what you'll need is a paper plate, a sharp pencil, a marker pen, some blue tack or some sellotape, a flat piece of ground outside to work on and some sun. The first thing you'll want to do is find out where the centre of your paper plate is. I know that my paper plates are 23cm from side to side, so I'm going to use a ruler to work out where the middle of my paper plate is. Once I've figured out where the centre of my paper plate is, I'm going to push my sharp pencil through this point and I'm going to keep pushing until the metal part where the rubber is touches the underside of my paper plate. I'm not going to push the pencil right the way up to be level with the paper plate because I'm going to be doing this on a picnic table where there's a hole that that bit of pencil can sit down through. You'll want your pencil to be standing straight up and down and you might need to use some blue tack or some tape to help secure it in position. And you'll also want to make sure that your paper plate isn't going to blow away. For this you could use some stones to weigh it down, you could tape it onto the ground or I'm using blue tack to stick it onto the top of the picnic table. Now that my pencil is standing upright and my paper plate is stuck to the table, I'm ready to start the activity of marking down the hours on my paper plate. Just before the next hour comes around, which for me is 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to go out with my clock so I can keep an eye on the time and I'm also going to take out my marker pen. When the clock turns to 8 o'clock, I'm going to look at where the shadow is coming out from the pencil and put a line inside that shadow and write 8am next to the line. That shows that when the shadow is on that line, it is 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to repeat this step every hour, going out with my clock just before the hour to mark down what the time is by looking where the shadow is, putting a line right in the middle of the shadow and writing the time next to it. You'll notice as I'm marking the times that the gaps between the hours seems to be getting bigger as time goes on and then smaller again as time goes further on. There is an explanation for this which I'll give you shortly. Something else you'll have noticed each time I've gone out to mark the time is that the size of the shadow coming from the pencil has changed. It started off as a longer shadow and then it got smaller as it approached 12 o'clock and then it started to get bigger again as it went past 12 o'clock. This is because to start with the sun was at an angle off to the side of the pencil but at 12 noon the sun is almost directly up above and that is why the size of the shadow has changed. Then as the sun starts to move across to the other side the shadow gets stretched again as the sun is then coming down at a different angle. You can test this out with your hand and a torch. By moving the torch side to side based on where your hand is you can change the size and shape of the shadow of your hand. As you'll have noticed, a sundial is made up of two main parts. There's the gnomon, and that is the pencil which we have sticking straight up from our plate, and there is the dial, and that is what our paper plate is. So what is it that allows humans to be able to use the sun to tell what time of day it is? Well, during the day it looks as if the sun is moving across our sky, but the sun isn't actually moving at all, it's the earth that is moving. The earth is rotating or spinning in space at around 1000 miles per hour, meaning it turns 15 degrees every hour, and that's what makes it look like the sun is moving across our sky. Now, if the earth is moving 15 degrees every hour, why is the shadow on my plate not moving 15 degrees every hour to account for that movement? Well, the method that I've used is not the best method for creating an accurate sundial. It would work perfectly fine at the North Pole, where the sun appears to do a full 360 turn in one day. However, what I would need to do to make a perfectly accurate sundial is to tilt the paper plate and pencil so that they were parallel to the Earth's tilt on its axis and make sure that the pencil was pointing north. 
However, the method I have set up will allow me to be able to check the time daily here where I am, because the sun is not going to shift that much in its position in the sky for where I am just now. So although my segments aren't equal, I should still be able to go out tomorrow at 12 o'clock and the shadow will be on the 12 o'clock line. One of the other fascinating things about sundials is the fact that it would need to be calibrated based on where on earth you live. Now on earth there are imaginary lines called longitudinal lines and these run from the top of the earth to the bottom of the earth and the different time zones are based on different longitudinal lines. In the UK the time we use is called Greenwich Mean Time and this is based on the time in Greenwich based on the longitudinal line that runs through it. It's called the mean time because it means it's the average time. Where I stay is actually 4 degrees to the west of Greenwich, meaning the sun doesn't reach me at the same time that it reaches Greenwich. So a sundial in Greenwich might show 12 o'clock, but a sundial where I stay would actually only show 20 to 12 because the sun hasn't reached that 12 o'clock point yet. For sundials all to work on the same time for the same time zone, the sundial I buy for where I stay would need to be calibrated based on being 4 degrees to the west of Greenwich and that way a sundial in Greenwich would then match up with a sundial where I stay. The invention of mechanical and then digital clocks did away with the issues that were involved in sundials and having to calibrate them to the same time zone, however sundials are coming back in popularity as a feature in people's gardens. It's important for the function of society that they operate on a set time zone. So even though the sun time here is technically different than it is in Greenwich, it's important that my clocks show the same time as they do throughout the rest of the UK. So if I'm arranging to meet somebody or phone somebody, we know that our clocks are working to the same time. Sundials were humanity's early way of allowing people to be able to tell the time accurately rather than having to guess based on the sun's position in the sky and this has just improved even further with mechanical and then digital clocks but there is still a lot of fascinating science that goes into sundials and with them increasing in popularity now it's an important one for you to know. Well that's all for this week, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM activities I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews and here to my brand new Things You Should Know series. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring sundials.